Sigma notation is a compact and convenient way to represent an arithmetic or geometric series. We'll look at an example and explain what each part means. The big yellow symbol is the Greek letter sigma. It means the sum or summation. The expression to the right of the sigma symbol is called the function. The letter below sigma is the variable in the function. The number down here is the value of the variable in the first term of the series. And the number on top of sigma is the value of the variable in the last term of the series. Here's a summary of all the parts in sigma notation. Make sure you're aware of what each of these mean. Let's find the values of all the terms of the series represented by this notation. To find the first term, we'll start with the function 3n plus 2. The value of n in the first term is written below sigma and it is 3. So the value of the first term is 9 plus 2 or 11. To find term 2, we'll start with the function 3n plus 2 again. This time n is equal to the next consecutive number after 3, which is 4. So the value is 12 plus 2 or 14. For term 3, we'll start with the same function. And this time n is equal to the next number, which is 5. So the value of term 3 is 15 plus 2, or 17. For term 4, again we'll use 3n plus 2, and this time n equals 6. So the value of term 4 is 20. For term 5, we'll start with the same function, and this time n equals 7. So the value of term 5 is 23. For the next term, we'll continue to use the 3n plus 2. The value of n for this term is 8, the number that follows 7. And because 8 is written on top of sigma, it means this is the last term in this series. And its value is 24 plus 2, or 26. So this is the series represented by this sigma notation, where the function is 3n plus 2, and the value of n goes from 3 to 8. Notice this is an arithmetic series, and the common difference d is equal to positive 3. There are a variety of types of series that can be shown using sigma notation. These include arithmetic series that are finite, infinite arithmetic series, geometric series that are finite, and infinite geometric series. We'll look at an example of each one of these types. We'll start with an example of a finite arithmetic series. Here is the sigma notation. The function is 4x. This tells us that x equals 3 for the first term, and x will be equal to 7 for the last term. To get the value of the first term, we'll substitute 3 for x, and the first term is 12. For the second term, x equals 4, so the second term is 16. For the third term, x equals 5, so the third term is 4 times 5, or 20. x equals 6 for the fourth term, so the fourth term is 24 and x equals 7 for the last term, so the last term is 4 times 7, or 28. We see that this is indeed an arithmetic series, and the common difference is positive 4. In this case, no exponent is shown for x, so we can assume the exponent of x is just 1. There is no exponent that contains a variable. This is true for the function and all arithmetic series. The second type of series we'll look at is an infinite arithmetic series. This is the sigma notation for this example. The value for a in the first term is 2, and this shows there are an infinite number of terms. We'll substitute 2 for a to get the first term, so the value of the first term is 7. For the second term, a equals 3, so the value of the second term is 10. For the third term, a equals 4, so the value of the third term is 13. a equals 5 for the next term, so its value is 16. The infinity symbol on top of sigma tells us that this series goes on forever until a is infinitely large. So we'll just write dot 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 here. Looking at the terms, we see this is an arithmetic series, and the value for d is positive 3. Again, there is no exponent that contains variable in the function. This also shows that this is an arithmetic series. The next type of series we'll look at is a finite geometric series. Here is the sigma notation for an example of one of these. This time the function is 3 to the power of p, and p is 1 for the first term, 
and 5 for the last term. For the first term, the variable p has a value of 1. So the value of the first term is 3 to the power 1, or 3. For the second term, the value of p is 2. So the value of the second term is 3 to the power 2, or 9. For the third term, p equals 3. So the value of the third term is 27. p equals 4 for the fourth term. So the value of this term is 81. For the next term, p is equal to 5. And this is the last term. The value of this term is 3 to the power of 5, or 243. Looking at the terms, we see that we need to multiply each term by 3 to get the next term. So this is a geometric series, for which the common ratio r is equal to 3. Looking at the function here, we see that it does have an exponent which contains a variable, p in this case. This is another way to tell that we're dealing with a geometric series. The last type of series we'll look at here is an infinite geometric series. Here is the sigma notation for the example we'll use. This is the function, and in the first term the value of the variable y is equal to 1. The infinity symbol on top of sigma shows us that this series goes on forever until y has an infinite value. For the first term in this series, the value of y is 1. So the value of the first term is 4 times 2 to the power of 1, which is 8. For the second term, y equals 2. So the value of the second term is 4 times 2 to the power of 2, or 4 times 4, which is 16. For the third term, the value of y is 3. So the value of the third term is 4 times 2 to the power of 3, or 4 times 8, which is 32. For the fourth term, y equals 4. So the value of the fourth term is 4 times 2 to the power of 4, which is 64. This is an infinite geometric series and goes on forever. So we'll just write dot 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 here. Looking at the terms, we see that we need to multiply each term by 2 to get the next term. So this is a geometric series for which the common ratio r is equal to 2. Looking at the function, we see that there is an exponent which contains a variable, y in this case. This is another indication that we're dealing with a geometric series here. Here is a summary of examples of the four different types of series we discussed, with their sigma notations and their terms. Remember, if there is a variable and an exponent in the function, this series is geometric.